by the, the girls equally well as the boys, but they were happy to have it first before it. But I can't tell you what happened then. So this is this little boy which they got, that's my mother, that's my father, that's when I was one year old. And they didn't worry yet too much at that moment. I mean, I didn't speak at all. I didn't speak any language which anybody could understand. I didn't speak at two, and I didn't speak at three. And at three, then, I developed my own language, which nobody else could understand. My family can hear. And I'm sure this is not Canada. It's certainly not Swiss German. It's nothing which anybody could understand, except for my sister. My sister, who is one year younger, she understood me and she translated to the parents what this crazy guy just has said. <laughs> and you can understand that my parents were very, were worried about me. They thought I had a small animal, a, a beast, a, a mentally retarded, and something is wrong with this little guy here. And probably, or something wrong with him. He had great difficulties to, to communicate to anybody else. So, how did he finally learn his chemistry? It took just a long time. He was very, very slow in his development. But, you know, everybody is a research. The young ones and the older ones all are research. Just we, the chemists, we are using complicated tools and others are using simple tools. Like this guy here, he just uses his tongue as a chemical for chemical analysis. He finds he has a sweet down in the pot. This is also a chemist. He also finds a sweet down here. He has senses for that. So everybody is a researcher. Everybody is a chemist. So, at one day, the chemical ghosts were coming to me. Chemical ghosts, see here they are coming. They are cooking their soup here. And they told me, go up to the attic of your house, go up there. And you find something interesting up there. I went. I went up into the attic. I crawled into this little door. That's what they said I should go in. And then they said, turn to your left. And I turned to my left. And I opened here this box. And this box contains the last remains of, of an uncle who died in 1923, not a long time ago. And he had chemicals. And he stored these chemicals in this box. And I was the first to open this box again. I took this box down into the basement of our house here, the basement of the house, and I started to do chemical experiments here in my very first chemistry laboratory. So that's how I became a chemist. And I did very complicated and very dangerous experiments. And by chance, I survived. And by chance, our house survived. And that's why I'm still here. That's why I became a chemist. It's as simple as that. And you see, I started then to, to read all the books I could find about chemistry. The house library, the city library. And I tried to educate myself before actually having any chemistry teaching. And I learned a lot. And much of what I learned was actually wrong. Because I took it out of very old books, 1868. Nobody understood chemistry at that time, or fully. So if you look in it, this book of inorganic chemistry, and you look, for example, for water, very simple molecule. Here you find the molecule water, water, wasser, the wasser stuff of oxide. Even the stoichiometry was wrong. You see here, H2O, they were just writing H2O. So my knowledge was very fragile and not, not, not correct. But I had them 
to read a lot later on. But that's typical for us scientists. We start somewhere else, and then we have to read the okay? And then, of course, I also experienced the fact which has been expressed by Georg Christoph Lichtenberg. He said, who, he who understands nothing but chemistry does not understand chemistry. So you have to broaden your horizon. You have to know much more in order to understand what is going on in chemistry. So that's what I try to do. You know, when you have, you are a chemist and you want to walk along this dusty road here towards your goal here, to your professional goal, it's very, very difficult to walk on a single leg. You need a second leg as well. And what is the second leg? Second leg are your passions. You need passion in addition to your profession. And only then it starts to sparkle in your brain and you become creative. You need two legs. If you have a single leg, you just cry out. Okay, what was not my passion? You know, I, we were living at four parallel railroad tracks. That's our house was standing on this side of the railroad tracks. So I started to become interested in railway engines, in mechanics and so on. But then every morning when I wanted to go to school, the schoolhouse is over here and our house over there, I had to cross here railroad road lines. And there were four parallel lines that there were about 500 trains per day and the gate was more than always closed. So I had to wait and to wait and to wait and to wait at the gate. Unfortunately, I wasn't alone. There were other people also waiting. Maybe some musicians who had to go to concert here in the, in the city hall where the concerts took place. They were living on this side of the the railroad that they also were waiting at this gate. And I met very famous musicians. I met the, our conductor, Hermann Scherben, who is quite famous. I met Clara Haskell, a, a brilliant pianist. I even met Pablo Casals standing at that gate. And that inspired me. I said, I also want to become a musician. In addition to being a chemist, music is my passion. That's what I decided. I started to pump your home. Music here. This is here one of my scores, which I was composing. It hasn't been performed up to date, and it probably sounds horrible. But anyway, it was really a great passion to do of composing of music. And that's a, a very much later picture when I found it my family. I will tell you something about that in a second. But I learned to play the cello as well, similar to Pablo Gazelle's. And my wife, she was playing the violin. And that's actually how we met. At the very first day when I saw this charming lady, she was playing the violin, and I was playing the cello, and it harmonized together. So we decided we have to marry. <laughs> so that's only a duo. I mean, if, if we would have had, had a trio, then probably I would have two wives by now. If we would have had a then I would have three wives by now. It would be even better, but or, or worse. And your anyway, these are my children here, which came then later, and you see, they are laughing because it sounds so important. <laughs> anyway, this is now my second leg, music, and this inspired me. And I have some interaction with chemists. You will see later on that I'm really taking advantage of my musical knowledge also when I'm doing chemistry. Anyway, then during high school, I wanted to, to try out chemistry, and I went to industry. Here in the mountains of Switzerland, here I had my very first employment in 1951. I was 18 years old. And this is the company where I did uh, water analysis. 
the adapt of my work, place it at top of my work there for a few weeks, and just try to get the spirit how this chemistry is industry. And I think it's important that our students, our youngsters, they also have this kind of contact. I mean, that's really inspiring, not the lecturers going out into industry and do something useful there. And that's the